to add more and more adjectives, things get more and more tricky. So there's a lot of words that we're using to be different, to mean different things. So let's start with the easy one. Constant coefficients. That means coefficients are not going to be changing. So these are like the ODEs that we were solving before. Now, linear ODEs, linear ODEs meant that the coefficient functions uh, we're all linear, so our linear functions are actually even more simple. They'll just be constants, so they'll actually be degree zero instead of degree one. Uh, now, non-homogeneous, when that describes an ODE, that's describing uh, that it's not equal to zero. So homogeneous is what we did before when it was equal to zero. So the only difference now is it's all the same stuff we just did in the last section, except it's not equal to zero. So that's a super fancy way of saying q of x is not going to be 0. Is it generally going to be equal to a constant, or is it going to be equal to a function? Or a function. So now that we work through the title, we can get started. So the ODE form that we're going to be looking at, it will look the same, or start out the same. And remember the notation, the, what looks like an exponent on y is the number of derivatives you're taking, not the uh, regular exponent. It doesn't mean like y to the nth power. So this last one is just regular y with no derivatives. And the only difference from last section is this is going to equal some function of x. That won't be 0 this time. So first thing we're going to do is solve for yc, just like we did before. We're going to pretend it's 0 and solve for yc. So pretty much the only thing you really needed, if you did enough practice problems, the only thing you really need to remember is we start out with y equals e to the mx. And then very carefully plugged it in, did a bunch of algebra. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But it really needs to start with that y equals e to the mx, and that's how you get your characteristic equation. So once you have this accomplished, what we're going to do next? <coughs> there is two cases. Yes, there's two cases that can happen. So step two is complicated. So step two can't just be summarized in a sentence. So case one, no term in Q of X is the same as a term in YC. In this case, so yp is the particular solution. So then yp of x is a linear combination of all the terms in q of x and all of its derivatives. So you might be thinking, well, all their derivatives, if it's not a polynomial, I could take derivatives forever. That is true. But if you think about things like sine and cosine, derivative of sine is cosine, more or less, derivative of cosine is sine, et cetera. So it only goes 
if you see sine, the derivative is cosine. And if you keep going with more derivatives, you're not getting anything new. So if you see a sine or, or cosine, you're going to include both of them. Things get more complicated with tangent, because you're a tangent secant squared, and then the derivative secant squared is something more complicated. So some trig functions would pretty much be impossible to put in for q of x. Polynomials are nice, because they'll disappear after some derivatives. And let's see. If you see e to the x, we know that those derivatives are e to the x. So a lot of the functions, um, their derivatives don't get much worse than the original function. So there are some functions that are nice to put in for q of x and other ones that are horrible. So square root x's will be a bad one because you keep taking derivatives and your power keeps going. You'll have negative half power, negative 3 halves power, negative 5 halves. So you'll have an infinite number of derivatives. So there's plenty of bad choices for q of x. So in order for this to work, you can't have an infinite number of linearly independent derivatives. So let's go ahead and do an example of this. <coughs> so this will be our first example. Find, and we'll do case two afterwards. Find the general So general solution is this uh, homogeneous solution, yc, and the particular solution, yp. So we just spent time figuring out yc, how to get the homogeneous solution. And now we're just going to add in the particular uh, of, we'll go y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y equals 4x squared plus 6e to the x. Is this one of the problems that we solved before? I don't think so. It wasn't the last one we did, is it? No. Okay. So go ahead and get the yc, the uh, homogeneous solution. So set it equal to 0, find yc. So that's what I want you to do first. It's not, but I see what you think. It was, a, it was a degree two, and it yeah. kind of similar. <coughs> All right, so we'll take two minutes for this.
M equals negative 2 repeated twice. M plus 2. Yeah, M plus 2, so M is negative 2. Because that, well, I mean, I was kind of lazy. I just stopped right here. So you just look at the left side of the equation and set it equal to zero. Yeah, so I'm solving it like it was a homogeneous. Okay. So I'm turning, I'm basically just kind of erasing Q and putting zero in its place. Now, this is not the solution. This is the homogeneous solution, not the solution to the, um, to the original. So I changed the problem, so this solution is for the new problem. Could we think of it similar to one of the, I think it was a homework problem, where we had this set equal to zero and this set equal to the other part? Is that how we're going to do it, break it up like that? E m to the x equal to the 4x squared plus 6 to the x? Uh, it'll end up looking something like that, just looking at my notes. Uh, but I don't know what you did, so I don't want to say what I'm going to do is like something that I don't know. <laughs> All right, so m is negative 2, and it's repeated twice. Uh, it's real, and it's repeated, so we're going to um, basically have a linear function in front of e. So our yc So this is what we get right here. Because it's repeated, we get a constant and a linear uh, coefficient. All right, so any questions on this before we keep going? Um, and of course, you could uh, distribute it if you want to, depending on what your, what your goals are. One of those two forms might be a little more useful. All right, so we got yc. Now we can, this better be in case 1, because it's all I wrote down. No term in q of x is the same as a term in yc. So we know what yc is. It's this. Here is, I'll write down, rewrite q of x, although you can see it right on the board. Is any term in q of x match up with any term in uh, yc? It's close, but because we, uh, if it was a negative 2x, the answer would be yes, it does match up. But because it's not negative 2x, it's just e to the x, they are... We saw before they're linearly independent if the coefficient of x doesn't match. All right. All we have to do now is take every single derivative of q. Good news is on these problems, I will pick a q that doesn't have infinite different derivatives. So there's not that many derivatives that fall out of here. There is a, the original x squared. There will be an x, and there will be a constant. And all the derivatives of 6e to the x are going to be 6e to the x. Now, even if it was e to, you know, the whatever, 7x, if I take derivatives, numbers, constant coefficients come out of that. So no matter how many derivatives I take, I'm just going to get a new constant multiple times that. So I'm going to write down, a, well, let's take a few derivatives of q just to be a little bit careful, even though it's pretty clear. And I don't need to go any further because, well, I could go Q triple prime, but <laughs> I'm already wanting to write zero. So the, we get one, two, three, four different terms, basically. And that's every, no matter how many derivatives I take, I'm not getting anything new. So those are my four terms that I have. And it's a linear combination of the four things that I circled. So I don't need to keep the numeric coefficients that are here. It's going to be a linear combination of these four things. So the fact that there's a 4x squared, it could have been a 4,000x squared. It would be treated the same way. I'm going to make a linear combination of these. So the constant coefficient in front doesn't matter. So we'll write our linear combo right here. Of terms in all derivatives of q of x is yp. So we're ready to write down, we got all of our derivatives we need, we're ready to write down yp. I don't think I'll have space to do it here, so we'll do it below.
So I've already used C1 and C2, so we'll go C3 for a first constant, C3. And I'll go decreasing powers of x, C3x squared, C4x plus C5. You could write C5 times 1 or C5 times 8, but you don't want to do, or just C5. And next, C6, E to the x. You don't need to do C7 times 0 because that's just going to be 0. So you don't need the C7 times 0. So there are four terms, and that's what the linear combination looks like. On your YC there, is the X supposed to be on the C1 rather than C2, or how did it swap? Oh, it should be, oh, the way I wrote it, it should be on C1, definitely. Now, it was arbitrary that I chose C1 to put in front of X and C2 to put as the constant. Um, so you could have changed that around, but yeah, it was inconsistent. All right, so our total solution is the sum of these two. So y is yp plus yc. Now I'm tempted to check this, except for the fact that it's going to be a pain. Because I need to take two derivatives of a seven term, six term, function and then uh, add up that combination and see that it actually equals uh, zero. So if you're pressed for time, I'll accept this answer. You don't have to, you, you show me yc, yp, they're right here, pretty clear. Might as well circle them. yc and there's yp and I know that y is the sum of those two together. So I would be okay with this as your answer on your quiz or your midterm. Just make sure I can see yc and then I can also see where yp is. If you just write that last part and walk away, that's not okay. That's maybe one point that you knew there's a particular and a general and you added them together. So that's Basically, all there is to case one, nothing too special, just linear combination of derivatives of Q. And don't forget to include the zero derivative, or Q <coughs> itself. So it had an X squared, so I need to include X squared. It's not just the strict derivative, it's also the zero derivative. All right, case two, if we have repeats. So how did I write case one? I didn't really make a big deal about it, so let's go. Let's triple underline it, if I can do that. So that's case one. And now we'll do case two. So case two is going to be similar. So you're going to look at a linear combo of derivatives of Q for any terms that are also in YC so these terms lead repeats All you have to do simply multiply the repeated term by x to the n, where n is the smallest positive integer that makes it linearly independent.
So that looks kind of complicated. Generally, n is going to be 1, 2, or 3. And it's not even going to be 3 that often. You're generally going to multiply by x, occasionally x squared, and very rarely is it going to be x cubed. So r to the n usually. Usually n is going to be 1 or 2. So this example is really similar to the last problem. So the good news is I already know YC, because I didn't change the left side. So we don't need to go back through all that stuff. So there's our YC term. And like I said before, sometimes it's good to write it in different forms so you can look at it differently. So let's take some derivatives of Q of X. And then we'll write down a linear combination of, or we'll circle all the different terms in there. I can already see without taking derivative, we already have a repeat right here. So we already have an x e to the negative 2x. So that's already uh, puts us in case 2 for sure. Oh, we actually have to figure out our coefficients that we wrote down. So the C3, C4, C5, and C6 have specific values. I just realized that. It's a little part I skipped over in my notes. So let's rewind and go back to our last problem. We actually, for our particular solution, we actually need four actual constant values, not just some constant somebody else will figure out later with conditions. So. Any guesses on how we could find the constant values? Everything we need is on the board. It's not a bad idea. So it might be related to the original constants. What we can also do is plug our solution to the original and see which ones actually solve it. So we're going to plug our solution back into the original and see which one can solve it. What happens if I plug in to our original? So we'll call it original asterisk. What happens if I plug in yc to asterisk? What will I get? Think about what will I get if I plug in the homogeneous solution to this right here? Now I'm only going to be plugging in, I, don't, I only have things to plug in for the y, y prime, and y double prime when I plug my solution back in. What will the left side turn into if I plug in yc? That's exactly right. So if I plug in yc, where did that come from? It came from all this stuff being 0. So if I plug in yc, I will get 0. What that means is you don't need to plug back in yc 
you really only need to plug in the particular. You could plug in YC for fun, but you're going to get that at all. It's going to cancel out to zero. Which uh, is, and the fact that the derivative is a linear operator is the reason you can put a linear combination in of these. So we're not going to plug in YC because we would just get zero if we did that. So all we need to do is plug in YP to there. So in order to plug in YP, we've got to find YP prime and YP double prime, and then plug it in. So these derivatives should be relatively easy. We got 2C3X plus C4, no C5s, plus C6E to the X, YP double prime will be 2C3 plus C6E to the X. So I'll rewrite the original here. Y double prime plus 4Y prime plus 4Y equals 4X squared plus 6E to the X. Unfortunately, it's going to get really ugly. Well, it's going to get really, really wide. Oh, we got a little more room. OK, so here we go. YP double prime, 2C cubed plus C6E to the X plus 4 times YP prime 2C3X plus C4, plus C6, E to the X, plus 4, just YP, C3, X squared, plus C4, X, plus C5, plus C6, E to the X, equals 4, X squared, plus 6, E to the X. From this, you can figure out the four constants. Any ideas on how to do this? You've done something very similar before. It looks way more complicated than it actually is on how to figure out these constant coefficients. We're going to match coefficients, except now we don't just have polynomials, we have a little, well, we have other functions. In this one, we got e to the x, basically. So we're going to match coefficients on functions that are the same. So let's go ahead and write, let's go big powers of x out front. So we'll put our polynomial out front, and then we'll put the e to the x terms in uh, afterwards. So we'll start, highest power of x I see is squared. So we have 4c3 x squared. Now we'll go with pow uh, first powers of x. And there should be quite a few. So looking on the left side, we have 4 times 2, 8c3x. So 8c3 plus 4c4. And those are all of our x terms. Now we're going to go to constants. 2c3 plus 4c4. Yep. Plus 4c5. That should be the last constant term. Now our e to the x terms, we have c6 plus 4c6 plus another 4C6. And this equals 4, 4 squared, 4x squared, 
plus 6e to the x. All right. So it looks like c6 is going to be really easy to figure out. So we got 9, is that right, 9 c6s. So I'm just taking the coefficient in front of e to the x and just matching them, saying they're equal. So this is just like the partial fractions, uh, matching coefficients. It's just a little more general than just polynomials. So c is c6 is 6 over 9, which is 2 <coughs> thirds. So there's c6. Now we'll match the other ones. So we'll go for the x squared term for c3 is matched up with 4. And 8c3 plus 4c4. Four four. What does that match with on the right side? So there's nothing written on the right. There's no x term. Zero. So there's a 0x. So if you want to write that down, there's plus 0x plus 0 constant. So there's no x, there's no constants. We got 0, the constant term, same thing, 2c3 plus 4c4 plus 4c5 is equal to 0. So we got c3 equals 1. This is a linear system of, in this case, three equations, three unknowns, except it's probably not worth doing anything fancy. This system is super easy. It's a, already in a triangular form. So we got c3 is 1. So a times 1 plus 4c4 four four equals 0. c4 is negative 2. And last up, plug these in. 2 times 1 plus 4 times negative 2 plus 4c5 is 0. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Add to the other side. Regular 6, C5 is 6 fourths, or 3 halves. There we go. So we got all of our C values, and now we can take these four values and bring it back. Oh, we need to go. All right, time flies when you're finding coefficients.